Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to Bosses Only, the video series where we look at just the bosses from a dungeon. Because you're not stuck on trash, you're stuck on bosses. From the Scions of Ithelia DLC, this is Oathsworn Pit. And the first boss you'll encounter in here is the first secret side boss. When you get to this area on the map, look for a hidden door up in this top left area. That'll take you through to the Trial of Blood. When you get in here, follow all these walkways down to the very bottom. We just sped it up because it's a long way. At the back of this room, there's a totem. Interact with it, and the first secret boss will appear. This is Sluthrug the Bloodied, and he's a bloody straightforward gentleman. Tank, taunt him, turn him away from the group. Don't ever be too far away from him, because he will gap close on you and there's a little mini explosion. You don't want none of that. He's going to summon these ice circles all over the place. Don't stay in them, because each tick does more damage than the last, to the point where it simply isn't safe. You can see up there in the top left how much it chunks my health. So don't get too far away from him, don't stay in those ice circles. Watch this cone attack that he does, he channels it for a while, it does a bunch of damage just to make sure you're blocking, it's not too terrible. Now, all these little blood bogey monsters that he's spawning, the ones that you can kill will then become allied to you. The ones that you do not kill are allied to him. When he's close to death, you need to have more on your team than he's got, otherwise he will suck all of his ones in and heal health up to a little under halfway. So just make sure you kill as many of those as you can. They die almost instantly, so you're not going to have too much trouble. Just watch out for that cone attack. Don't stay in the ice circle for too long and keep focusing on him until he dies. That really is it. Straightforward as I said. Now, once he's dead, you're going to get this buff that you'll always have, Blooded Vitality, which increases healing done by 10% and reduces damage by 10%. You'll also, when synergizing the Totem of Blood, get this all big thing here, which I can't really be bothered to read, but uh, fortunately you've got a pause button, so use that. Anyway, let's head to the next boss and turn on the hard mode. This is the first proper true boss, Packmaster Rathelros. Or, well, I guess it's two bosses because he's got this wolf with him as well. Anyway, the first thing you'll want to do, tank, taunt them both, but take the wolf a bit further away from the man. He is ranged and won't come running up to you. If you have them too close together, we didn't know this at first, because this was release day, first time ever in here. Um, but if they get too close together, there will be a circle around both of them. You're seeing it here, this red circle, and they will both be enraged and hit harder. So it's very important to keep them apart. Now, this totem that's currently being shot by Cat, while it's active, both of the bosses will be immune to damage, so as soon as that totem appears, you need to destroy it as quickly as possible. Keep your eye on all those uh, traps that are out, you don't want to step in those because you'll be held in place and won't be able to move. And that little mechanic that you just witnessed, you've seen that before if you've done the fight in Dread Cellar against Magma Incarnate, there'll be a streak aimed at each player, you'll want to dodge roll at the last second block, definitely do not be hit by that unblocking and we'll have a little whoopsie. Also watch out for those volleys. He fires multiple of them. They can stack on top of each other, and if you're in them, you will take the damage from all of them, so keep them spread out by just sort of moving around. Again, this mechanic right here, watch out for it, and at the last moment, you'll want to dodge roll or block, but never take that hit unblocked. Boss has got a little too close together again, so you see that enraged circle, and you'll want to keep that away. Let's use the Totem of Blood, because uh, extra health is nice. Currently the bosses are too close together so they are enraged and immune to damage because of the totem so let's get rid of that and again make sure you are blocking otherwise you'll have a whoopsie remember to block it's, it's kind of important here uh, anyway let's get rezzed and get back to it you've pretty much seen all of the mechanics now remember just keep the two bosses separated so they don't enrage and when he summons this totem, you'll want to kill it right away because both bosses will be invincible while it's active. So that is the priority. Destroy it. Again, watch out for that streaky flame mechanic. Whenever you see it coming, you'll want to dodge roll away or uh, block. But don't stay there because there'll be a little fire under you. It's not as persistent as the ones in Dread Cellar. It'll go away after just a few seconds. This volley attack again. Remember, these can stack and there will be multiple. It can be incredibly damaging, so don't stay in it. Now, here's a mechanic I haven't yet mentioned. When you get this little icon above your head, it means the wolf has chosen to ignore the tank's taunt and simply chase you. Don't forget to block. But when he's chasing after you, the tank will not be able to intercept him or pull him away. You just have to run for your life until he stops chasing you and goes back to the tank. It just lasts for a few seconds. And that's pretty much everything. Again, you don't want to be stacked together, dodge at the last second, or block and get away from the little fire circle that's left. Totems up again, let's make sure we're destroying that because both bosses are invincible while it's alive. 
Move around when the volleys are coming down. Make sure they're not stacking on top of you. Run away from the wolf if he chooses you. Another streaky thing to avoid. I've almost got the wolf killed. There we go. That's the end of him. Now we can just finish off the bloke. And he's still going to be doing all the bloke things. We just won't have to worry about the wolf anymore. But he's almost dead too. Excellent. Loot your lockpicks, manganese, and aura chalcum. And then make your way through this door up here. And pay attention to the map. Light the brazier that's here. Light the next brazier that's over here. And that'll open the way to the next secret boss, which we're heading to right now. And you'll be in this room full of all these little fires. Activate the thing to make the man appear. Bulg of Wicked Barbs is a very annoying bow and arrow and fire man. There's lots of fire in this fight. You see all these little brazes that are all over the place? Run around and synergize them to turn them green. The man will summon those annoying fire ghosts that you might remember from Black Drake Villa that the tank can't taunt. They go flying across the room toward any of the brazes that have a little icon above it to claim it and make it orange for the man. It's just like the first secret boss with the blood bogies, except this time it's these fire things. You need to have more than the man. If you don't, when he's about to die, he will suck all of his fires in and heal up a bunch of health. So make sure you've got more fires than the man. Man. He also summons these annoying little purple bow and arrow men. You see all those streaks of flame going across the room. They just sort of sweep back and forth. But you can avoid them by simply moving, dodge rolling, keep away from them, or actually kill the annoying little purple man that uh, is shooting them. Now, the boss also spawns a couple of these big fire circles that'll chase a random couple of players. It's just like the lightning AoE that Rizozo's Alpha Mass spawns in Crypt of Hearts 2. Simply kite it around and avoid it. Keep focusing on the man, tank, make sure you're keeping taunt of him, avoid the annoying purple archers, and keep on claiming fiery things as and when you see them. Again, tank can't taunt these fire ghosts, but they do die really, really quickly. Just drop all of your damage on them and get rid of them before they even get near any of these braziers, and that way they can't claim them. If a ghost does claim one, it also claims the adjacent tiles in all four cardinal directions, so be mindful of that and make sure you're killing those ghosts as quickly as possible. Well, I mean, that's... I've explained all the mechanics that happen in this fight. It's just its just all that stuff. Kill the purple guy if he's shooting that stuff. Run away if the fire things are chasing you. Turn as many of these little fires green as you can so that the man can't have them. And, and yeah, that's it. So, uh... So how's it going? Uh, hi, if you're watching this a hundred years in the future, um... What's it like? I suppose I can't hear your answer. Is ESO still going? Are you, is, is anyone even going to watch this in 100 years? Well, hello from 100 years in the past, if you are. And with him dead, you get this buff, Conqueror's Vim, which increases your mag and stam recovery by 30%, and synergizing the Totem of Conquest gives you uh, this, which is really cool, and if you overlap it with the player, they can get some ulti too. It's a very dank buff. Well, let's head through this portal then. To the second proper boss. And of course, let's turn on the hard mode. So, what have we got here? This is Anthelmia's Construct, and Anthelmia here that we've tab-targeted. Now, the big guy is really the most important thing, but you have to absolutely keep an eye on Anthelmia. She'll teleport somewhere and then get a shield around her. While she's doing this, she's shooting fireballs at random people, and each successive one does more damage to the last. You need to damage her until she stops doing that. If you ignore her and let her keep doing the fireballs, they will eventually get so damaging that they just one-shot you even if you're blocking. We found out the hard way, so stay on top of her and don't let her do that mechanic. Now, the big guy, keep him roughly in the middle of the room. You'll notice in each of the four corners there's a big gigantic axe. Periodically, the boss will reach for one and suck it over to him. You don't want to be in between that or it'll go through you and you'll probably die. It does a lot of damage. After he's grabbed an axe, watch out because he will pick a random person and throw it at them. You need to dodge roll out of the way or again, it's probably going to be a one shot. Now, periodically, the boss is going to spawn some little moths. They fly towards you. You'll have this icon above your head to let you know that they're coming and then they will explode. It's just like the spiders in the Magigalig fight in Coral Eerie, so you know what to do, just wait until they get to you, then dodge roll away and let them explode harmlessly. If they explode near any of these red barrels that are dotted around the room, it'll do a mega explosion that really hurts, but the persistent fire AoE you see on the floor afterward, they don't do any damage. Like, I was able to just walk around in them, stand in them, act like they weren't there, and so was everybody else in the group. So I don't know if that's by design and it gets nerfed later, so I would watch out for them just in case. But as of launch, they don't do any damage to players, so you can literally just treat it like regular floor and stand in them. 
All right, let's talk about the god-awful mechanic that the tank will be dealing with. You see this great cone of fire being shot out of the boss? Everywhere it goes, it leaves little fire circles behind the really, really painful ones like Kinrad does in Black Drake Villa. You can't stand in them for too long, you can see them. They last for a few seconds, then they disappear. Now, Tank, while he's blowing this fire, it's going to go wherever you point him, so try not to turn him around onto other group members because the fire will go on them and those painful fire circles will be on top of them. They don't last too long, but if someone's caught in them, it's going to end their day really, really quickly. Okay, now I'm talking about this retrospectively because it's already happened, but when you get the big guy down to about 70% of his health, or Anthelmia herself down to 40% health, the big guy will run to the center of the room, and the NPC that is with you for the story will shoot that statue head that's hanging up above, and it'll fall down on top of the construct, and he'll have this fancy head for the rest of the fight, and Anthelmia will be gone. I think she merges with the big guy, kind of like Orin the Black and Thurvokan in Fang Lair. In any case, for the rest of the fight, she is gone and you don't have to deal with that mechanic where she shields up and shoots fireballs at people that get worse and worse and worse. You pretty much just have to deal with this guy. Watch out for that cone tank. Try not to have him pointed over the rest of the group. Again, remember the gigantic fire circles that appear whenever a red barrel is destroyed. They, there's no damage. You can walk around freely in those. Whether that gets changed in the future or it was a mistake, I don't know. But as of launch, they don't hurt. You can stand in them. So just consider that like the rest of the ground. The only bad fire circles here are the little tiny ones that come out when he does his cone flame attack. And that is pretty much all you have to deal with for the remainder of the fight. He's still going to have his axe throwing business going on and you'll need to block or dodge roll out of the way and not be in the path of it. He's also going to have this conal attack going almost constantly now with the fire everywhere. And there can be a lot of fire all over the place. So tank, you really need to stack all of those carefully so that there is still safe clear ground for the rest of the group to stand on. But obviously don't stand in the fire yourself, Mr. Tank, because you'll end up, like me, uh, dead. If your tank does die in this fight, the boss obviously is going to aggro onto a random person, so that person just needs to run for their life while somebody else tries to get a res on the tank. We've almost got him now. Remember, get out of the way of that big telegraph that lets you know an axe is about to be thrown. Watch out for the cone. The small fires are the really dangerous ones. The big ones don't do anything, so don't worry about those. And keep an eye out for the icon above your head that signifies a moth coming to explode on you. When it gets close, you'll see a big circle, and then it'll explode just back away. And with him dead, we can loot all of our lovely lockpicks and manganese and make our way to the final secret boss. And to get to him... There's just an open tunnel. It's right here. I'm showing you on the map. When you get to that area of the map, run down that little door. We'll speed the video up here because it's just a long winding tunnel until you are in the room with the final man, Forgy Porgy. Lol, of course, that's not actually his name. This is Grub Duthag Many Fates. And what we've got here all around the room are these little like blacksmith forge type things. And the boss is going to run up to them and activate them. When he does that, an orange flame atronach will pop out that'll be on his side. If we run to a lit forge and use it before he does, we will get a blue cold fire atronach that helps us by throwing fireballs at the boss. The idea here is have more Atronachs than he does, because again, when you get him close to death, if he's got more Atronachs than you, he'll suck them into him and heal up a bunch of health. It's very, very straightforward. You just need to get to the forges before him. And you'll know when he's about to run to a forge because he will summon a meteor on all four players. When this happens, spread out because the damage will explode for all the meteors that are hit all in one spot. That would be a death. Spread out and then when they hit the ground, little fire circles will come radiating out from it. So make sure you're standing in a way that that doesn't let those hit other players in the group. And for the boss himself, all he's really got is a big wind-up heavy attack that the tank can block. See him doing it there, and that meteor that he does, and all these little fire things. The worst thing about this fight, honestly, is how fast he runs when he summons a meteor to a forge. You need to constantly keep your head on a swivel and watch for lit forges and interact with them before the boss. So long as you have more cold fire Atronax than he has regular fire Atronax, you'll win at the end of the fight. And that is it for the... It's just like the last one where... That's it, I've told you all the mechanics and it's, he's got a really long health bar, so. So for the rest of the fight, it rinse and repeat. Get to the forges before he does, spread out and block when a meteor comes down and keep shooting the boss until he dies. And, uh, and hi again, future people from 100 years in the future, if you're still here. Uh, yeah, video games were pretty cool back in our day. I wonder what they're like in, in your time. I wonder if they're as dank as this. I wonder if they've got rid of loot boxes and stuff. Okay, 
boss is about to die super fantastic now when he dies you'll get this rather lovely buff that increases your weapon and spell damage by 10 percent and if you synergize the totem back here you will get this thing which as you can see tank and dps have different values it scales off of your weapon damage with that we can make our way to the final boss and of course turn on the hard mode now this bloke is a nightmare get ready for some fun this is aradros the awakened tank the center of the room, that big sort of square great thing, it permanently hurts. Don't ever stand on it because you'll just die. I, Pretty much the center of the room is a no-go zone. See this big growing circle? You need to dodge roll out immediately before it explodes. If you don't, that's what happens. I am currently dead. You have to get out immediately before it fills because all of the squares encapsulated by that circle will catch fire and be ultra molten and it's just an insta death on the regular veteran and normal difficulties you don't have to get out before the explosion just right after but on hard mode if the explosion happens and you are still inside it you are instantly dead you have to roll out as soon as the circle starts appearing think carefully about where you want to hold the boss i moved him around that center area because you couldn't stand there anyway but some people say it's better to go to a corner of the room and do it there because every time he does one of those big slamming down circles like this all the squares inside of it are no longer safe to stand on you'll die so whatever you do make sure you're keeping plenty of free clear safe space for the rest of the group to stand on otherwise you're never going to get anywhere now keep an eye on the floor these disco effects that are going off every so often one of these lines lights up and there's a bunch of explosions going on it you don't want to be anywhere near because that'll kill you and again, remember that once the floor has been transformed to red and molten, it's no longer safe to stand on, so you need to be careful about where you tank the boss. You'll need to also be mindful of these little fairies that come along throwing fire at you. They're very annoying. Don't let them pile up. Just kill them as and when they appear because it takes nothing to kill them. And for the tank, watch out for that big cone attack because the fire really hurts. Now at 50% health, the boss goes to the center of the room and melts all the tiles in the entire room, so you need to run to one of the side rooms. Come over here and you'll find a boss to fight. There are actually three side bosses that you'll fight during this fight on the hard mode and for this one above you these things are falling down constantly so you'll have to stay moving to avoid being hit by them they do a big bunch of damage there's also this explosion thing which is a pie shape with one section that's free to stand in keep dodge rolling and moving to always be in the safe area he also summons this great big flaming awful circle don't be in that he is not too difficult to kill and once he is dead this entire room is going to be melted floor and he won't be safe so you'll have to get out of here quick and i mean quick preferably quicker than that you really don't have a lot of time to react but not to worry that was practice let's get a rest and get back into it shall we once you come back into this central room, the other side bosses from the two other side rooms are going to run in and you're going to have to deal with them too. Now the one with the shield has this shield throw mechanic, obviously you don't want to be in that path and there's all kinds of fire as well. The other side boss that has run in will do a big gigantic fire circle, here it is, you do not want to be in that, it's very similar to keel cutters in Dreadsail Reef. Got hit by the shield throw from the other guy there, that was a practice, never mind. So ideally you want to kill both of these side bosses as quickly as possible so that you can just focus on the big guy because all the extra mechanics that these two bring into the room it's a problem just get rid of them as quickly as you can. Now up in the northernmost room that you can go to there's an iron atronach in the beginning stages of construction and you can complete him and have him help you in the fight if you go to each of the three points in that room where there's a little brazier take the fire run it over to that partially constructed atronach and synergize and when you've done it with all three he'll come to life and walk into the room and help you out. We didn't even know about this until after the fact so we never got to use him here. I'm sure it'll be handy. With the two side bosses defeated, we just have to worry about the main guy for the rest of the fight, and he really ramps things up now. We have get these lines that shoot across the room, and then eruptions of fire go along them. Don't be in them, whatever you do, just get away. He also targets random people with a fire dot that's very similar to the ignite mechanic that you might have seen on the final boss of Scrivener's Hall. So that's pretty much a heal check, stay alive, and keep in mind that everywhere you stand, the floor under you will melt and no longer be safe to stand. So you really need to think about where you're going to stand if you have that mechanic on you. Keep avoiding the lines, tank, avoid the cone attack and all the fire. For the rest of the fight now, it really is just a positioning game. Be constantly mindful of what is happening around you, because if you're not, whoops, you'll end up like me, dead on the floor. So with the tank dead, 
whoever boss aggro is onto is just going to have to run until the tank is raised. Again, we've got that big slam. Remember, every tile inside of that circle is going to light up and not be safe to stand on. So you've just got to keep thinking about where you're standing, where is safe to go, what looks like it's about to explode, and what looks free and clear. There's really not much room for maneuvering in this fight, and you've got to position carefully. Again, keep an eye on those Nixads. Try not to ignore them because they're constantly throwing fireballs at you. It's just another aggravating mechanic that you could do without. The boss is your main priority here. Focus all the damage you can on him and watch your feet. I'm not joking. Look at the floor right now. There's almost nowhere to stand. And that's really all it is for the rest of the fight. Just watch your footing and keep focusing on him until he dies. Again, Nixads will still appear from time to time. Watch out for those and kill them if they come up because it's just extra fire nonsense that you can do without. And keep an eye on the floor at all times. Those tiles are lethal. You can see here during this last little bit of the fight, he ramps things up to an insane degree. It's like an absolute disco floor of nonsense and flames. So just keep focusing on him, keep looking at where you're going, and eventually he'll be defeated. And your reward for this accomplishment is an inventory full of lockpicks and manganese. Thanks for watching! Remember to like, subscribe, and click the bell so you never miss a video, and all that other stuff that YouTube people are supposed to say. The video is over at this point, this is just the thing that shows all the social links. I'll put a couple of other videos up here that you can watch if you want. You probably don't, you search for this particular dungeon for a reason, so, uh, so yeah. We'll see you next time on Bosses Only.